In light of the most recent mass shootings, these latest arrests are certainly disturbing. The first one in Ohio, where police have named James Reardon as their suspect. Police saying that he made an Instagram post of a video which shows a man shooting a rifle. Now, one of the things that really caught the attention of the new Middletown police in Ohio is that the Jewish Community Center of Youngstown was tagged in the caption. Now, that caption also implies that the gunman in the video would be the shooter behind a potential attack on the center. Now, Reardon has been charged with telecommunications harassment, police serving a search warrant at his mother's house. They recovered rifles, ammunition, a gas mask, a bayonet. Investigators now looking to determine whether or not those were actually purchased legally. The FBI has actually interviewed Reardon, but at this point, uh, they have not pressed any federal charges. And look at this body camera video from Florida that's showing the arrest of a 25-year-old believed to have threatened to commit a mass shooting. Tristan Wicks of Daytona Beach was detained by police. He's suspected of sending text messages threatening to open fire on large crowds. One of those text messages reading, I'd want to break a world record for longest confirmed kill ever. Well, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office telling CNN that it was actually the suspect's own ex-girlfriend that initially, initially alerted authorities. The girlfriend is a real hero here. Uh, she went to a local municipality, showed the text messages, and actually four municipalities got involved. He is the profile of a shooter. He's 24 years old. He lost his job. He lost his girlfriend. He's depressed. And one more note on this case, Wicks has told detectives that he does not actually own any firearms. However, he was fascinated with mass shootings, according to investigators. Uh, and then finally, let me take you to Connecticut, where another man was arrested there on Thursday, who also showed interest in carrying out a mass shooting. Police saying 22-year-old Brandon Wagshaw was arrested on weapons charges in Norwalk, Connecticut. Police saying that they received a tip that he was buying rifle parts online and then looking to assemble his own weapon. Police also had discovered that he had recently posted some messages on Facebook where he said that he wanted to carry out a mass shooting. We should mention, David Allison, that he remains behind bars at this hour. Is the American economy growing for more than a decade now, suddenly at risk of stalling, even tipping into recession? There is no guarantee of that, but there are plenty of warning signs. Let's take a look. This past week, if you hadn't heard it before, you may have heard the term inverted yield curve. What does that mean? It costs more to borrow long term than short term. That's backwards. And when that happens, you see it happening here this past week. You see it happening here in 2007, the last time it happened. And go back through history. When it happens, recessions normally around the corner. That's why many people in the markets and many economists say it is possible, not definite, but possible the U.S. economy is headed toward a recession. That is one indicator. Because of that, we had a roller coaster week on Wall Street, down because of trade concerns, up a little bit after those appeared to be ameliorated some. Then a, this here, this was inverted yield curve day, 800 points of market loss. Then modest gains to end the week, a volatile week in the financial markets, which we know many of you watch, and of course the president watches very closely. Some of this is beyond the control of any American president or the U.S. economy. The German and the U.K. economies contracted in quarter two, a warning sign they could be headed into recession. There's the possibility of a no-deal Brexit. That has the world worried about what's going to happen there. And Chinese industrial production at a 17-year low, the world's second largest economy, slowing down in part because of the trade war. Here at home, economic signals a bit more mixed. In the second quarter, consumer spending was up. Consumer spending is a huge piece of the American economy. And the Trump administration says this is proof to them there's not really a recession threat ahead. But Business investment dropped in the second quarter. That is a potential sign of trouble. And the University of Michigan's barometer of consumer sentiment dropped 6.4%. This, to many people, suggests if consumers are getting nervous and this turns around, that could be a trouble sign ahead. So if you've been through this before, jobs are lost in recessions. Businesses die. Investments tank. Home values plummet. And voters get cranky. The last time we had a one-term president, George H.W. Bush, he could not convince voters a relatively mild recession was over. And it was. So how worried is the current president? Well, he blinked and hit the pause button on his escalating trade war with China. That was Tuesday, even before that most alarming warning, the inverted yield curve of potential trouble ahead. We're doing this for Christmas season, uh, just in case some of the tariffs would have an impact on U.S. customers, but so far they've had virtually none. But just in case they might have an impact on people, what we've done is we've delayed it so that they won't be relevant to the Christmas shopping season.
And a good Monday to you. The broad perspective across the United States on this uh, Monday kind of shows you what we had to deal with in the past day or so first because upwards of 200 severe weather reports to be had across the U.S. Vast majority of them related to powerful straight line winds that was around the Midwest, around portions of the Northeast and even a report of a tornado across the state of Illinois. But the trend gets a little bit quieter. Still have a few scattered storms and showers around portions of the Midwest and Northeast, but this line of active weather here at best brings in a slight to a marginal risk over the next couple of days of severe weather and again the highest threat here become generally straight line winds and notice the threat expands areas into the midwest parts of the ohio valley and eventually even into the northeast by the middle of the week but temps an incredible heat wave still continue across portions of texas and oklahoma as well okc about 101 washington into the upper 90s on uh, monday afternoon and notice boston even climbs up back up to 90 degrees but i'm here to tell you some changes for the better in store over the next few days. We'll show you this here. The heat advisory is in place and heat warnings across portions of uh, the plains that's certainly going to continue for at least a couple of more days. And then you notice around the Northeast, we do have heat advisories that will expire later on on Monday evening. But as we go in towards the next few days here, and especially this weekend, look at the mid 70s come back into the forecast for New York City. So certainly a more comfortable trend. And you know, around the Southwest, they've also uh, dealt with quite a bit of heat here, especially when you consider it is the hottest time of the year, but we're still about five to 10 degrees above average for this time of year. Look at Palm Springs, 110, 115, even 116 before some cooler air eventually by the latter portion of the week. I'm Pedro Amjavahari, CNN Weather.